Next topic is maximum unambiguous range. So what is the maximum unambiguous range? So as we can understand from its name that we have to calculate the range, maximum range of the target without any ambiguity. That means there should not be any confusion while we calculating the range of the target. So what happens is in the radar system, suppose if I am transmitting a high frequency signal, high frequency pulse. Okay. So this is the high frequency pulse which we are transmitting and we will wait for some time to get the echo signal because uh, as we transmit the uh, transmitted wave, we don't get the receive signal immediately because they, it will take some time to uh, reach from the for the signal from the radar station to the target and target to the radar station. So there has to be some time waiting time to get the echo signal. So here we are transmitting first pulse suppose and we are waiting for the echo signal and we are waiting and after waiting sometimes suppose we don't get any echo signal so what we can think is that there is no target that's why we are not getting any echo signal because if there would have been a target then the signal will be re-radiated from the target and we should get the signal but we are not getting any signal so what we will do we will transmit a second pulse because we have to transmit the signal continuously because if maybe it may be possible the signal is not in our range and when we move forward and we travel uh, we transmit again then it may be possible that the target comes in the range or the target is also moving so now it has been come in the range and when we transmit the second pulse we may get some echo signal corresponding to the second pulse but after transmitting this second pulse we are getting a echo signal instantaneously this is the echo signal which we are getting just after transmitting the second pulse this is the echo signal so now what we can think is as we transmitted the second signal we got the echo signal so there may be ambiguity that this echo signal is corresponding to the second pulse or the first pulse because if it is corresponding to the first pulse it means the target is very far from the radar station and if it is corresponding to the second pulse and after transmitting the second pulse we are immediately getting the equal signal that means the target has been reached very close to the radar station so uh, there will be confusion to uh, calculate the range of the target so what you have to do you have to calculate the range of the target before transmitting the second pulse that is the uh, that is the range without any ambiguity because we have not transmitted the second pulse so if we get the echo signal corresponding to the first pulse only then we will get the correct range of the target so we are having a some pulse pulse having some width that is denoted by t on that is the transmitted pulse and we are waiting for the next pulse to be transmitted and that duration waiting time is denoted as t off because there is no signal transmitted during this duration so this is called t off so the total time is pulse repetition time this is known as pulse repetition time this is known as pulse repetition time before the pulse repetition time if we get the echo signal we will have the correct range so this range is defined as this range is defined as the range is c t that is pulse repetition time as we uh, derived the value of the range that is range is given by the range is given by c t 
TR by 2. So this range should be without any ambiguity. So this is the R unambiguity. This is the velocity of light and this TR is the time. So the total time here is pulse repetition time without uh, getting any echo signal or before transmitting the next pulse we are getting the echo signal that would give us cor correct range. So this time should be actually equal to the pulse repetition time divided by 2. So this is the equation of the maximum unambiguous range and the pulse repetition time the inverse of the time is the frequency so which gives C upon 2 into pulse repetition frequency. So pulse repetition frequency is inverse of pulse repetition time. So this is the maximum unambiguous range. If you want to calculate the uh, range without any ambiguity and this time second time uh, this echo signal is called second time round echo that is after transmitting the second pulse we get the echo that is known as second time round echo. So pulse unambiguous range is simple formula. Now let's calculate the duty cycle. What is the duty cycle here? So from the basic definition of the duty cycle we know that the duty cycle is the ratio of T on divided by T on plus T off. This is the formula for duty cycle and T on what is T on? So T on is the width of this pulse which is transmitted. So this T on can be written as pulse width and T on plus T off from the diagram it is actually pulse repetition time. So this is pulse repetition time or the pulse repetition time inverse of it is given as pulse repetition frequency. So this is the pulse repetition frequency. So this is these are the formula for the duty cycle. Duty cycle can be defined as T on upon T off, T on plus T off. This is defined as pulse width divided by pulse repetition time. Pulse width multiplied with pulse repetition frequency and also the average power divided by peak power. These are the formula for the duty cycle. So this is maximum and ambiguous range. The next topic is continuous wave radar system. So in the continuous wave radar system, the block diagram is, suppose we are having a transmitter here. And it is transmitting a pulse with frequency F0 with the help of transmitting antenna. This is antenna. So the wave is transmitted here. And suppose there is some plane or target. Or this target is moving with some velocity. So when we get the receive signal here, this receive signal is having a frequency suppose F0 plus minus Fd and this is with the help of this antenna, this frequency which we are getting F0 plus minus Fd with the help of this antenna we are mixing it. So we are applying to the mixer and the mixer gives the some frequency and the difference frequency and it eliminates the F0 frequency and here we get only the frequency Fd which is known as beat frequency. And here we have a beat frequency amplifier. And at the output of this beat frequency amplifier, we are having a indicator which indicates the 
location of the target or the range of the target okay so this is the beat frequency amplifier is in such a way that it removes all the clutter or all the echo because of the stationary target it only gives the location of the moving target this, this continuous wave radar system gives only the uh, information about the moving target all the echo signal which we can have because of the stationary signal is removed by this beat frequency amplifier that is the property of this type of amplifier so uh, we don't need to go into the depth of it just remember that this continuous wave radar system is used for the receive reception of the moving target so it gives the indication of the moving target and the clutter or the echo signal because of the moving target uh, uh, stationary target is removed by this beat frequency amplifier so the purpose of the beat frequency amplifier is to remove the echo signal because of stationary target now because uh, here is the frequency f0 plus fd so the plus sign you have to take the plus sign is considered plus sign is considered when the distance between when the distance between target and target and radar is increased radar is actually decreased that means when the target is moving towards the radar station when the target is moving towards the radar station then the frequency which we got at the receiving antenna is f0 plus fd the plus sign is considered when the distance is less that is the frequency is high f0 plus fd and the minus sign negative sign is considered obviously in the opposite case negative sign is considered when distance is when the distance between target and radar is decreased increased sorry radar is increased so negative sign we consider when the target moves away from the radar station so these are the two frequency which we got and the frequency which is denoted here as fd is known as the doppler frequency and this doppler frequency is given by 2 into vr upon lambda this is known as doppler frequency and where this vr is known as relative velocity and this lambda is wavelength of the signal to be transmitted that is c upon f0 the signal which we are transmitting is having the frequency f0 so this lambda is actually c upon f0 so here we have 2 vr upon lambda which is relative velocity and the wavelength to be transmitted and lambda is equal to c upon f0 so this is the basic principle so this continuous wave radar system is based on the principle of doppler frequency so this is all about the radar which you can uh, study in the basics of radar and now we will solve some workbook questions